Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. And today we have an interesting matchup for you. This is Slash Crasher in the T100LT Soviet Tier 10 light tank. And this is quite possibly the best passive scout in the game. Extremely mobile, with a very low profile and a fantastic camo rating. The trick with this tank is to rush ahead, find somewhere sneaky and spot targets for your team. So he's rushed ahead. He's made himself somewhere sneaky. Except he's not actually spotting any targets for his team. Well, okay. He spotted one, but in return, something spotted him. This is where the extremely good mobility comes into play. The C100 LT is very good at rushing forward and getting into sneaky positions. And it's equally good at getting out of them. Of course, it helps if you pre-position yourself for a speedy exit, which is exactly what he's doing here. This is the more traditional spotting bush, rather than the bush that he made for himself on the high ground on the mountainside there by knocking the tree over. And yet he's still not really spotting anything. And there are probably two reasons for that. The first is that the enemy team are probably wise to the tricks of the light tanks, and have skirted the map border down to the south as wide as they possibly could in an effort to avoid being spotted. Uh, and the other reason is this tank only has 390 meters of view range. The fairly limited view range is a bit of a balancing factor on this tank, although we'll discuss that in slightly more detail in a moment, because right now he's being chased by an EBR 105. And it wouldn't do to get hit by one of those. The T100 LT does have reasonably tough frontal turret armor, but that's about it. Everywhere else, the armor is very thin. So, yeah, extremely stealthy and fast, but with a relatively limited view range in comparison to other tier 10 tanks, 390 meters. It's not like the Sheridan with 420, or the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, also with 420 meters. Uh, hell, even the Chinese WZ1321 has 400 meters. But despite sharing the same worst in class 390 meter view range as the French AMX 13105, the T100 LT does have that phenomenal speed and stealth combination that providing the map has suitable concealment in the right places, you can use those two factors to overcome the limitations of that subpar view range by using the speed and stealth to get close enough to the enemy that they're inside 390 meters and you'll spot them anyway. I strongly suspect, however, that right now Slash sincerely wishes that he had that problem because the enemy team have herded his team all into one corner of the map. I'd hazard a guess that right now at least half, maybe as many as two-thirds of the enemy team are inside that 390 meter range. Which means that the opportunities for passive spotting uh, have probably come and gone. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> there's not going to be anything passive about the spotting that Slash is going to have to do from here on in. I mean, he's going to try, of course, because that's what this tank is very good at. But let's just say that the opportunities to actually do it are going to be extremely limited. Right now the team are down three tanks, although they have managed to kill one enemy. Oh, wait, no, I spoke too soon. Right now the team are down four tanks, and they have managed to kill one enemy. So what's a light tank to do? Well, there appears to be a bit of a stalemate up to the north, and the guys in the town, on the other hand, are hanging on by the skin of their teeth, and they are outnumbered. And nobody else from the north appears to be in any rush to come down here and help out. And since at the moment just about everybody on the team is within at least 150 meters of an enemy tank, Slash's spotting services are fairly surplus to requirements at the moment, so, ah, what the hell. Well, let's get some kills in. Or at the very least, do some damage, and give the enemy team something else to shoot at. Buy some time for the guys in the town. Because there are not many of them left, they are heavily outnumbered and they could probably use the help, but oh, hang on, now what's happening up here? Oh, it's just going from... look at this. It's gone from bad to worse. They've managed to pull back another couple of kills, but they've lost... Oh, <laughs> and now five tanks down compared to the enemy. Oh, no. There are five enemy tanks around the corner of the base there, but they've managed to lose contact with everything other than the T-95 Chieftain. So that means that Slash is going to have to do some active scouting. Not the passive scouting that this tank is so very good at, no, the active scouting that's more suited to machines like the French armoured cars. Not that this tank is, under the right circumstances at least, a bad active scout. 
these circumstances, if not for the presence of that T-30 on the flank over there, but aside from that, the circumstances here are actually pretty good for it. Because he's able to take advantage of the low ground here and just peek over the ridge, exposing just the barest bit of the top of this extremely flat and low profile turret. The only problem here, and the reason why an armoured car is better at this, is because if you want to stop an armoured car, you have to blow all of its wheels off. If you want to stop... Oh, shit. Oh, and he spotted. And there is a T-30. <laughs> oh, holy crap. That was close. And in fact, it was artillery that hit him. Well, barely. But again. And stunned him. But yes. If you want to stop a tank, you only have to blow one of its tracks off. One hit will do. If you want to stop an armoured car doing this... You pretty much have to blow every single one of its wheels off. So, armoured cars are unquestionably better at doing this sort of thing. But that doesn't mean that the T100LT is bad at it. It's not. It's actually pretty good. It's just not quite as good as an armoured car. There aren't actually that many downsides to this machine. I had myself a good laugh earlier looking at this tank's stats on the wiki page, and apparently one of the weaknesses of the T100LT is probably going to have to deal with that T30 at some point or another, because one lucky hit is all it's going to take to ruin his day, and of course every time he pops up to spot the tanks on the corner, he's revealing himself to that T30, he's just waiting to take the shot. But yes, there he is. Looking at the tank's wiki entry, I, I read with great amusement that apparently one of the downsides of this machine is its limited ammunition capacity. Yeah, this poor tank only carries 43 rounds of ammunition. The British Tier 10 light tank, the Manticore, would like to say hello, by the way, <laughs> with its 16-shot ammunition capacity. Although I hear they're thinking of buffing it and giving it anything between 4 and 6 more shots. That's right. 4 to 6 whole more shots. Sounds like a bit of a joke, but when you think about it, the Manticore has such a pitiful rate of fire, it would struggle to fire that many shots during the course of a whole match anyway, so if they gave it any more, it would just be a waste of time. Okay, the threat to the north appears to have been, if not stopped, at least delayed for the time being, and I have no idea why, I'm not quite sure what they're afraid of. But we're going to take advantage of that. Oh, hang on a second, we got him. But while everybody up north is basically just digging in and waiting to see who blinks first, Slash is heading down south and hooking around the bottom of the lake and I get the distinct impression that he intends to misbehave. Starting with the T-30, who is probably in all likelihood still in the same position. I mean, it's a bad position. Yep, there he is. I mean, he, I know he thinks it's a good position. He's holed down behind a rock. Nobody's able to shoot at him, but he's not able to shoot at anything either. In fact, the only thing that he's seen to shoot at during the entire course of this game was Slash here, on the couple of occasions when he got spotted, doing active scouting runs up to the north. You know your arse is sticking out, don't you? No, apparently he didn't. Well, he does now. Okay, T-30 taken care of, but an enemy 50TP managed to somehow sneak past him in the town. And it's at this moment when the enemy to the north are beginning to make their move. So while I'm sure Slash is very tempted to go hunting artillery, it's not really a luxury that his team can afford right now. They really do need him back in the town at the very least helping out the friendly 50TP with the enemy and hoping that the tanks dug into the north and just dig in and hold on for a little bit longer. God knows they should be able to. They've had enough practice at it so far. And Slash has made it back in time to dispense some extremely vigorous and probably exceptionally unwelcome surprise butt sex to the enemy 50TP here. And this is when we see the friendly Batchat, who has completely abandoned the Udes 1516 to the north to the tender ministrations of five enemy tanks. Come all the way down here only to basically gift a kill to the enemy 50 TP. But Slash did at least make it back in time to make the difference. The enemy 50 TP is dead. The friendly 50 TP is still alive, but only just. And now it's the Udes 1516 that needs all the help he can get. There are only three of them left alive. And once again, actually once again, the enemy team are not pushing that corner. Suspiciously so, in fact. In fact, maybe the Udes 1516 isn't actually standing guard alone against five enemy tanks, because a lot of those enemy tanks haven't actually been seen on that corner for some time. And we know there was a fairly furious exchange of fire going on up there, so maybe some of them are fairly low on health. 
and have been struggling back through the valley in an attempt to do something sneaky. Like, for example, the AMX M445, who is a one-shot kill and did. Did, in fact, see Slash on the way around. Well, Slash spotted him. Doesn't look like the 50TP has a shot, so it looks like Slash is going to have to do this himself. Ah oh, well, no guts, no glory, chicks dig scars, and glory lasts forever. And he's got him. Got spotted again, of course. Luckily he doesn't have to worry about the T30 anymore. Let's just have a quick peek. Nope, didn't see anything else. Okay, four against three. There's not but a few trees over there, so anybody who's paying attention might have... Aha, there's the artillery. And he hasn't seen him. Oh, okay, that one missed. And the artillery is paying attention. He's not locked in that top-down view. He is aware that he's under fire. It's going to take one more. This tank is not a particularly good sniper. But it's good enough. Right, three against three. And there's the STB-1, and he is not a one-shot kill. And he does know that he's been spotted. But he is backing off. Which means that at the very most, the US 1516 up to the north there is facing... Well, confirmed he is still facing the T110E4. Probably also facing the T95 Chieftain. Because that guy managed to get so close, it's difficult to see how he could have pulled back without being spotted. e 4 is a one-shot kill. That explains why he was in no rush to push that corner. The question is, where's the T95 Chieftain? Well, let's find out, shall we? No sign of him yet. The Udas is just waiting patiently. He can see that Slash is coming. There he is. Oh, side shot. Top gun. Right. He got spotted, so the E4 knows that he's here. But the e 4 is a one-shot kill. The E4 will need an ammo rack to kill him. And the Udes is backing him up as well, so either way this E4 is dead. Unfortunately, the E4, with plenty of notice that Slash was coming, had all the time in the world to load the high explosive. And that was a lot of damage. And also took out his ammo rack. So he's used the repair kit. Unfortunately, the E4 was not quite as alone as everyone anticipated. The STB-1 didn't waste any time down at the bottom end of the map waiting for the 50TP, and instead came up to back up his lone surviving teammate. The Udes managed to get a good shot into him, however, and the STB-1 is now a one-shot kill. That is great news for the 50TP, because he probably would have died to the STB-1, but now he's in the cap circle, and he's 100% unopposed. The STB-1 now has a real problem, because if he turns his back on the Udes to head south through the valley to take care of the 50TP, the Udes is going to kill him. And while the Udes doesn't have great gun elevation, it's got enough to pump a shot into the STB-1's lower glacis if he comes over the ridge and tries to kill him before heading south in order to reset the cap and win the game. The STB must kill the Udes, and then kill the 50TP, and he must do it in that order. And he's going to have to do it quick, because the 50TP isn't far off completing the cap, and there are less than two minutes of the game left. What he should be doing, instead of trying to find an angle over the top of this ridge, is backing off, breaking contact, and then taking his chances with a roll of the dice of coming around either the left or right side of this rock, and hopefully taking the Swede here by surprise, then turning around and hightailing it at his best speed south, and again taking his chances with the 50TP, who will know he's coming. If he were to do that, the Udes would probably have to try to chase him over the top of the rock in order to maintain contact. But this doesn't appear to have occurred to the STB-1, and in any case, it's far too late, because the 50TP has capped 200% earning himself the Invader Medal. So thanks in no small part to the efforts of Slash Crasher here in the T100LT, that's a very unexpected victory for his team. It is nice to every now and then see a team snatching victory from the jaws of defeat instead of the other way around. And that victory, I'm sure we can all agree, was due mostly to Slash's heroic efforts in this extremely good Tier 10 Soviet light tank. Slash, thank you very much for sending that one in. Everybody else, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.